What's up? How are you guys today? We are back with another Q&A, which we haven't done in a little while, so I'm happy to answer some questions for you guys. And be sure to keep an eye out in another three or four weeks. We'll put up another post on the community page on my YouTube channel, and you guys can ask your questions again if you missed it this time around. So Joseph P., do you think it's more of a digestion issue when people have a hard time gaining weight despite eating a lot rather than just a fast metabolism? So instead of trying to troubleshoot all of these things, you got to see, hey, are you following a high quality organic diet? Have you reduced the environmental radiation? Do you have to get in the gym to increase your lean body mass? So the solution to that problem, regardless of what's causing it, is, is pretty simple and straightforward. So might take a little while for your lean body mass to improve, for you to feel better once you remove the toxins and increase the animal protein, but it should happen. Uh, YZC, looking back on your years in the field, what do you think about the health and nutrition information being spread around on YouTube channels? Also, has it changed over the years? For the most part, I've really done my own thing, maybe only a few times, you guys post comments about other people and maybe I'll check them out but I really just do my own research figure things out because you know when I kind of got into this space with the high quality grass-fed carnivore diet no one was really doing that it was kind of based off of health gimmicks conventional stuff just influencers trying to make a profit so then when people started copying me plagiarizing my ideas and all that type of stuff and kind of twisting my information to sell their own stuff that's where I started looking at it and getting more irritated and just overall disappointed in, um, in how everything else was going. But hopefully I can continue to change that over the next few years. Uh, the real thing that uh, kind of makes me upset is that I'm really no longer able to just say everything I know and just give it out there because of what's happened. So, you know, less people are able to improve their health because when I do that, then someone just copies it and they censor me and they get all the credit for it. So, you know, it's safe to say this world is not run by people who have your best interest at heart. Taryn Tor, Frank, what do you think of things such as ashwagandha, fredogia, agretis, tonkat ali for testosterone? Also, is there any test supplements you will recommend now that I'm unable to get the bovine powders? So if you can't get the glandulars from Frankie's free range meat, the beef testicles, goat, sheep testicles that we have, you want to go to a local butcher, a local farm, and try to find them because that is 100% bioactive available testosterone. If anyone is telling you like, that you can boost your testosterone with anything besides like steroids or actual like animal testicles, then you're wasting your time. It, all, all that stuff for testosterone specifically, you know, I haven't done specific research on other benefits. It's a waste of time. John Sergi. I'm finding it hard to reduce sodium since I have a severe potassium deficiency. So would you recommend I supplement potassium? I know you have a video on this, but reducing sodium is still not helping with potassium deficiency. That's kind of hard to say. If you're not putting salt on your food and you're eating a lot of potatoes and red meat, I mean, it should almost correct itself within like two or three weeks, maximum, maximum. And having coconut water in there with potatoes and meat is such a high... Uh, potassium intake and the supplements the dosage you have to take so much potassium powder that you would get diarrhea and it would just flush you out uh, that's something I haven't really talked about the potassium concentration in like a synthetic supplement like potassium citrate it's like you know it's almost like the volume compared to just eating real food isn't worth or, or possible to take so uh, you know, I mean, you could send me an email. Maybe I can help you out a little bit. But that doesn't sound uh, doesn't sound right. Uh, Sismica. <laughs> How do you get the extremely strong beer like kefir? Uh, the one I make at home is carbonated and has the kefir flavor, but is nowhere close to yours that you sell. I use reverse osmosis water, organic molasses, and organic sugar. Uh, you could just increase the amount of uh, kefir grains and sugar in the relative volume of water. That should help. Uh, Vessel tea. Should we add some salts, minerals to our drinking water for proper hydration? Also, are oysters worth a while, one week or less for their heavy metals? So just eat a high quality diet and drink a quality mineral water. You shouldn't have to add anything, especially if you're salting your food. And then the mineral content can be obtained 
in that diet or by using supplements. Definite no to oysters. No circumstance do I really consume shellfish anymore. I react so poorly to it at this point with my liver function. And just in general, when you have a really, really clean diet and you're doing everything correctly and you go eat some seafood, you might feel like death. Uh, Gebra GH. R, will you start supplementing vitamin D as sunlight decreases and do you still recommend 10,000 IU? So I've never really been a fan of vitamin D supplements unless you're incredibly deficient, which is really a one-time thing. So when you start like exploring health and trying to improve your lifestyle, maybe you have to take vitamin D for a few months, but that's it. Then you have to do sun exposure. Uh, I'll say it again, outside of correcting a severe deficiency where your blood levels are like below 10 or 20 nanograms per liter, it's really not, uh, really not worth it. And uh, I haven't brushed up on my measurements in a little while. So uh, below 10 to 20 nanograms per liter or like 40 to 50 nanomoles per deciliter. I think that's correct because the units in America versus Europe are different. Uh, Sir Mega, what is a good workout routine or diet for a beginner who's just trying to build strength? I really only recommend my maximum volume hypertrophy routine because uh, you will progressively increase in strength even if you're doing low weight with high volume. And even if I was only benching like uh, 20 or 30 pound dumbbells maximum, you know, if I actually wanted to max out on the flat bench press, I mean, I could rep out, you know, 185 or 10 or 15 pretty easily. Now, I don't do that stuff because, um, you know, my, my shoulders aren't as healthy as they were, and I don't think it's beneficial for overall aesthetic appearance. But you just want to get in the gym, do a, a amount of high volume, follow a good diet, and uh, get a lot of rest. I really like that routine because it's able to build up each muscle you know, make sure your shoulders are hypertrophying, your chest is hypertrophying. There's a nice balance of overall muscular development, not just going in the gym and benching as much as possible and having imbalances after two or three years of lifting weights. Uh, Sfaro B, how should one consider whether or not they should take your B-complex if they're drinking large amounts of water kefir? I remember at one point you were temporarily superdosing B-complex alongside kefir. So... A B complex isn't something I like as much as individualized B vitamins. Uh, the B complex is good for like if you're traveling or um, an antioxidant protocol, but after you kind of see how you feel after taking the B complex and notice that you know it's much more energy, then you can start isolating individual B vitamins. And you know when you take one and you don't feel good, then you know you want to try another one. Victoria Ulrey, are flavonoids and carotenes bad for the liver? Is it a matter of quantity ingested? Uh, yeah, most people don't need them because they have too much of the vitamin A and they have a deficiency in the other, like vitamin D, K2, all the other B vitamins. So, you know, if your liver is overloaded, really anything you consume in general needs to be processed. So we want to try to minimize uh, that as much as possible. Another question from Victoria. Is semi-complete grains like rice okay when you have IBS because I have insulin problems? So I like to stop refined grains, plus it depletes minerals, and I lack some. Yeah, when you have like impaired digestive function and candida yeast overgrowth, uh, sometimes a lot of refined foods can really irritate the gut, especially when you're not on top of your probiotic intake and your antimicrobial protocol and the amount of fiber you're ingesting. So until you're able to kind of line that up and do it correctly, you want to consume things that don't irritate your stomach as much, whether that's a higher like volume foods that have more of a water content or stuff that's a more complete fiber source. Uh, Jake MC, can one take enzymes, water kefir, kefir grains, and masticum all together with a meal if they have really poor digestive health? You can, and there is some kind of uh, negative interaction there because uh, the enzymes are pretty caustic and kind of just eat through stuff and can, might negate the water kefir and kefir grains to some degree. So what you're better off doing is at least spacing it out in the meal. So you'll have you know, the enzymes and masticum in the beginning of the meal, and then you can have the water kefir and water kefir grains throughout towards the end of the meal. And maybe even put the masticum at the end and have the enzymes in the front, or you can try to time it a little differently. But the best answer to that question is you try the meal with each of those and see which outcome is the best. 
So you might feel better with just the enzymes. You might feel better with just the masticum. All, all of them might work together too. But uh, it can be difficult and it might take uh, some time uh, to get to a point where you can reduce those. Can be on productions. How do I reduce EMF exposure if I live in an apartment? We have a lot of products available on wifishielding.com. Uh, the simplest thing is to wear protective clothing like I am right now and then sleep and work in a bed canopy. That's the least invasive. If you want to start shielding the walls and the floors and all that type of stuff, it can get kind of crazy and kind of expensive if you're in an apartment that has other people nearby. Mr. O'Neilly Boy, how often should you incorporate processed sugars, if any? I mean, try not to because they increase uh, the body's need for like vitamin C and antiscorbutic value, but I personally do it like when I'm really hungry and I'm craving caloric density because I still have muscle from bodybuilding. You know, my actual lean body mass is not parallel to my digestive system. So I kind of overload my body when uh, I'm trying to like satiate my hunger and cravings. But if I'm able to control myself, I'll just have like a high quality meal with meat and grains and then I'll have an apple for dessert. And if I'm still hungry and I just don't care and I want to feel better, I'll have like some of the high quality organic snack foods that we have on frankiesfreerangefoods.com like um, the white chocolate chip cookie bars or the brown rice crisp bars. I'm eating raw meat and it's amazing. Uh, why have you never really tried the raw meat or animal food way of eating? Daniel Archer, uh, you have not watched the entirety of my YouTube channel. We did raw primal for a little bit and that was actually what uh, kind of made my health problems even worse uh, from the dairy consumption and getting the H. pylori from all the raw sheep and raw goat's milk I was drinking. I'm not a fan of that diet in any way whatsoever. Uh, T. Culpepper, what are the causes of dandruff in your opinion? So if you're following my type of diet and you reduce the EMF radiation and you're getting plenty of sun, the dandruff should really go away. Uh, I used to have all sorts of dry skin problems, dandruff, and I, now I do like no shampoo. I follow this diet and it's not something I worry about anymore. And that's really going to be the answer to a lot of problems for you guys is basically just copy what I'm doing. But um, for me to simplify that, we have the like meal protocol video that we did a few months ago that you guys can check out. David Salvador, my question is, do you believe that omega-6 and pork and poultry are really worth worrying about as bad as the same linoleic acid from seed oils or vegetable sources? Thanks. Yes, short answer, they're just as bad and they should absolutely be avoided. And then if we're going to get into like the nuances of, well, are they as oxidized as the vegetable seed oils? It's, it's really two forms of poison that have to be avoided in the diet. Under no circumstance should you eat that. Uh, if you really have to consume conventional meat, beef is uh, the least worst culprit. Dominic Cruz is cooked ground beef void of nutrition? That's what the Baltic psychopath says. I don't even want to really address this. Uh, however, we did do a video uh, on raw versus cooked, and I think we might have also included fresh versus frozen. Just search Frank Tofano raw versus cooked if you want a really in-depth explanation on that. And the, the short answer is there is a slight nutrient loss but an increased bioavailability in some cases and there's also an anti-scorbutic debate uh, that we discussed in that video. Julia Turk, yeah we get it, I'm really sorry this is happening. Uh, oh, I think I said something in that post that you guys can see. I do have a question if that's alright, what do you suggest in regards to diet for people living in the poverty level $15,000 and below per year? So if you bought a high quality ground beef for seven to ten dollars a pound and then had rice or a grain that costed you a few dollars a day you're looking at I would say ten to fifteen dollars a day food cost which oh uh, god forgive my math is probably four thousand dollars a year so it'd be a very boring diet but I think four to five thousand can easily cover all of your food expenses and supplements if you don't mind uh, sticking to that kind of really really strict boring uh, protocol of grass-fed ground beef and like organic rice. I think it can be done, but you're not going to be like enjoying and, you know, I mean, I kind of waste a lot of money on certain things I don't have to eat, but 
it can, my type of diet can easily be done if you're not having a lot of steaks, if you're not doing like all of these treats and expensive organic products. It's a lot more enjoyable, but it's a lot more expensive. FSS8CVC, should I eat beef thyroids raw? Should I eat the skin of the testicles or just the inside part? Concerned about hypothyroidism and testosterone levels. I mean, the glandulars have a higher uh, hormone bioavailability when they're raw. And I don't think you have to eat the skin of the testicles uh, at all. And yeah, people can be really sensitive to these, so you just want to have a very small amount to start. Uh, most people react kind of crazy to the adrenals because of their hormone content but they do feel better overall uh, the next few days for sure. John Martinson, do you really think ketosis is something to avoid at all costs when it clearly would have been a natural seasonal experience, if not more frequently for our ancestors? Uh, so the idea that we used to be like hunter-gatherers and that humans were not intelligent enough to harvest grains is kind of crazy. But regardless of whether you're debating if grains are... Uh, a natural part of our diet, which I personally think they are. The uh, lifestyle of someone on a keto animal diet is not something you can really replicate. If you want to be in the forest all day, in the sun all day, active, the, the body's nutrient demands are so much higher in that state that you, you can't really compare it. Like if you want to go live with the Australian Aborigines, you can go do that and live their diet and lifestyle, but um, there's a lot of things to consider there that is why I currently follow the diet I follow that is very high in grains and things that are still considered natural foods. Uh, the legit lad, the best way to lose weight fast with your better doctrine, I tried one small brown rice, beans and beef meal plus kefir grains, lost four kilograms in a working week, Monday to Friday, refeed Friday, I'm very interested. I mean, sounds like my, my plan is working very well for you. Four kilograms is around 10 pounds. Um, I, th I mean, that's really the, the protocol. If you want to include some days of fasting, you can. Uh, but the real thing that's going to improve your body composition and make you happier is uh, getting in the gym and doing the resistance training uh, very high volume to build up the lean body mass base. Next C, the onions increase testosterone. Like the, the clown Andrew Tate was like saying if you eat a lot of raw onions every day it increases your testosterone. I think that was him just trolling people and he's laughing inside his head at how much everyone's going to be farting. If there's any logic to that maybe there's some sort of uh, gut bacteria that uh, likes the type of uh, carbohydrates found in onions which uh, I mean having a healthier gut would increase your testosterone but compared to actual testosterone sources it's comical. Uh, hey, Victoria, a third question. Is there casein in beef and calves meat? Uh, that's an odd question. I think the answer to that is no. Uh, the casein is the protein that some people are allergic to in, in the dairy. Um, I think if you're, if you're not tolerating meat and you're having allergic reactions to it, the issue is a little bigger than isolating something like like, oh, is there possibly a casein trace of it in the meat now? That's a little, uh, a little crazy. Cambian Productions, best starch sources. So really, anything organic is necessary. And then as you go down that list, it gets very, very, very subjective. Uh, I mean, I personally have been eating a lot of organic bread, uh, which is made from uh, red winter wheat. They hull it and then the pasta too that I eat like the udon noodles that's been a lot of my calories or I'll do like organic white rice organic brown rice and lately I have, maybe we'll do the barley soups again and all that type of stuff but um, there are a lot of grains that I do avoid um, overall the best uh, from a nutrient and minimally inflammatory perspective is probably like an organic russet potato or peeled red potato. Those are probably the best overall starch sources because they have a nice balance of nutrients, fiber, and uh, really minimally inflammatory. At, uh, what do you know about Epsom salt bath? So the transdermal absorption of certain things isn't that great and it's kind of expensive. Like I tried doing some magnesium baths on occasion. Hey, I think they're great. I think they're amazing. 
uh, if you can afford to do them, if you have a bath and you have the time. I mean, I love to do a magnesium bath every day. It make me, but it's just, for me, it, it's a lot of work. I, I think the health benefits of them, maybe you'll feel better, maybe you'll sleep a little better, but it's, um, it's something you can try, and if you really like it and enjoy it, then definitely do it. Ashtar Sharan, how can I get a girlfriend if when I'm too ugly? I'm not the guy to ask because I don't go out. I'd like to think I'm a decent looking guy. Uh, I'm not tall, so I don't really um, like bothering too much because in my experience, the uh, success rate of me with women is just, it's, it's so, it's really, really silly because I mean, I don't, I'm kind of picky. I only go up to really pretty girls and those types of girls will have options of guys that are you know, just as good looking as me, but they're literally a foot taller. So um, I deal with that by focusing on my business, doing things I enjoy, helping other people. But if you really want female attention, yeah, I would just make a lot of money. And then you can go to other countries where uh, that's a lot more accessible and easier to do. You know, in America, women are stuck up. And if, you, if you're in that type of uh, area where you want to spend money on women to get their attention it is a lot more expensive here but you have to find something that you enjoy doing that makes you happy that um, that isn't dependent on getting attention from females although if that's something you really crave and desire there there's better and easier ways to do that uh, Nia Nahi who is your favorite vegan girlfriend oh I have I'd have to think about that one and go back through my videos a little bit that brunette girl, Sophia Esperanza, is just bad. At, like, she's so bad. She's really, really hot and pretty. There, um, in, in, I think one of the girls from, like, our Hottest Vegan Girls video is probably higher on that list because a lot of them are really, really pretty models. Um, I, just, I just can't recall which one I like the most right now. I'll have to let you guys know. Ask me again next video, and I'll give you guys a better answer. Brie Marie, uh, can you consume cod liver, the actual liver is not just the oil, while pregnant? I don't recommend that to pregnant women, one, because any type of seafood is slightly polluted, and two, uh, most women are def really deficient in the contrasting fat-soluble vitamins, so they should really focus on reducing the vitamin A and getting more of the, the other nutrients. Uh, Ninja, Frank, what is the official diet you now recommend for overall health since you aren't carnivore anymore, nor are you vegan? It, it's what I've been following and showing you guys for, I mean, almost the past two years now. So I don't, uh, I'm not going to go super in-depth answering that question. Uh, I mean, we just did the video uh, last week, uh, two years no longer carnivore, where I explain all that stuff. So you guys can uh, go back and watch that if you want to answer. Uh, but that is all the questions for uh, this Q&A, guys. So uh, thanks again for participating. And as always, thank you guys for continuing to support uh, my YouTube channel and all of my businesses, uh, which you can see on frank com if you want to read and learn about all the interesting products. So uh, if you guys can just leave a like on the video, put a comment down below, and uh, be sure to... Subscribe so that YouTube unsubscribes you next week. Thanks for joining me, guys, and I'll see you for the next video.